Alright, welcome back to another section of Algebra. little short fun lesson here. We're talking about geometric sequences in Chapter 6, Section 7. Okay, so here we have these two tables, and we'd want to see, are these relations linear or exponential? We've talked about that previously. So we would look and see what is happening from this term to this term. Well, you could either say we're multiplying by 2 or we're adding 2, so we'll check the next one. 4 times 2 will give me 8. 4 plus 2 will give me 6. So we are adding 2 each time. Okay, so this relation is linear. This is linear. Copy down that into your notes, and then we call this an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic. This is a TH here. Sequence. All right, so this is an arithmetic sequence, and this right here is referred to as the common difference. All right, now let's check this one over here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, all right, these are going up by 1 every time. So up here is plus 1 every time. And then down here, we have either plus 4 or times 2. So let's check the next one. This is plus 4 would be 12, times 2 is 16, so it's times 2. So we're multiplying each time by the same number. So this is exponential. And this right here, instead of the common difference, this is called the common ratio. Common ratio. The reason they call it a ratio is because I can take 4, I can take 8, and put it over 4. 8, I take the next number and put it over the previous number, and that gives me 8 to 4, gives me that factor. So the common ratio between these two, 8 divided by 4, gives me 2. And so this is a geometric sequence. All right, so we'll be looking to see, are they arithmetic, or are they geometric, or are they neither? And then maybe how can we write an equation for it and find the next term? All right, so here's an example. Let's check to see, is this arithmetic, geometric, or neither? All right, so from 2 to 10 is either times 5 or it's plus 8. Okay, plus 8 would give me 18 in the next one. Times 5 gives me 50. So this is times 5. This is times 5. And then 50 times 5 gives me 250. So at first glance, this looks like a geometric sequence. But be careful. Notice up here, from here to here is plus 1. From here to here, oh, sorry, plus 1. From here to here is plus 2. And then this one is plus 3. Okay, so since these aren't the same up here, that means this is not a geometric sequence. Because here we have times 5, times 5, times 5. And here we don't increase by the same amount. All right, now fixed, it should be this right here. Now we have plus 1, plus 1 here, plus 1 there, and then plus 1. All right, so we increase by the same amount every time. Down here we have times 5 times 5, and again times 5. All right, so this is a geometric sequence. The common ratio is 5. Okay, 10 over 2, common ratio. Take 10 over 2, and that's how I get 5. 
And now, if I want to know the next term, what's the fourth term? I would take the third term and multiply that times 5. So if I take 250 times 5, I would get 1,250 would be the next term. If I wanted to know the next term, I would multiply this by 5. So I'd get 6,250 if I wanted to know the fifth term, and so on. All right, times 5. So that's how you could find the next number in the sequence. Now, since this is an exponential function, let's look at the exponential function. Remember, y equals a b to the power of x. Okay, so let's set up a table for this. If x is 0, what is y? 2 times 3 to the 0 power. 3 to the 0 power is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. All right, so we get 2. Remember, we looked at this and said a is the y-intercept, because if we plug 0 in for x, then we always get a. Okay, so a is the y-intercept, so when x is 0, y is a, if it's in this form. If we plug in 1, 2 times 3 to the first power gives me 2 times 3, and that is 6. So plug in 1, we get 6. If we plug in 2, 2 times 3 squared, so plugging in 2 for x, that's 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, so 2, 18. And we could keep going. Now, what I'm wanting to do here is compare what's happening from this, and how could I write this equation? So from 2 to 6, I'm multiplying by 3, right? Because I had 2 here, and then I multiplied by one factor of 3. If I get to the next one, I multiply by one more factor of 3. So from the first term to get to 18, I multiplied by two factors of 3, right? I did 3 squared. So if I know the common difference, that common difference, where does that show up in, in this equation? The common difference shows up right there. So x is whatever term number, and then a is when x is 0, and b is the common ratio. Now, in a sequence, in a sequence, they might just give you the numbers like this and say, what's the next number in the term? Well, we can see what's happening here. 8 times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, so we know that the next number should be times 2, 64. Well, which term is this? Is this the fourth term, or is it the third term? Well, this is the first term, this is the second term, third term, fourth term. Okay, so how could I set up an equation from this? If I use what we just looked at, y equals, if, if 2 is this, and we used 8 for a to the x power, if I plug in 1 here, I get 1 times 2, and I would get 16, 8 times 2 to the first power. So that would give me 16. So that doesn't work. So if you have a sequence set up like this, you need to change this and say, well, in this sequence, they're not giving me the zero term first. So either you figure out what the zero term is, or there's another way that you can do this, and that is simply by subtracting 1 from x. So now, if I do 1, if I plug in 1 here, 8 times 2, 1 minus 1, that is 8 times 2 to the 0 power, 8 times 1 is 8. So if I plug in 1, I get out 8. So your formula is y equals a times b to the power of x minus 1.
for any sequence. And there you go. That's all the fun we're going to have today. Good times. Check in again next time for another fun lesson.